right, people. Let's get this party started. With Negan out of the picture, Simon hatched his own devious plan to march the saviors to the hilltop and exterminate Rick and the gang for good. Of course, not everything went as expected. From the Battle of the Hilltop to the Turning of the Hilltop to the Hallucinations of the Hilltop, consider this your spoiler warning. Let's lay out how The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 13 translates from panel to screen. The latest bullet flying, arrow shooting, walker biting episode of The Walking Dead, titled Do Not Send Us Astray, was directed by Jeffrey F. January and written by Matthew Negrete and Angela Kang. Hey, that's the new showrunner for Season 9, woohoo! This episode covers the events of issues 123 through 125 of the comics. Before we get to the epic hilltop battle, let's iron out some differences about the lead up. No! In the show, Morgan hallucinates a dead Gavin in the woods, until horns ring out warning of the Savior's arrival at their gates. The Saviors are coming, the Saviors are coming. <laughs> Sadiq convinces the town doctor to let him assist her, and she agrees. I like him. With Negan missing, Simon and Dwight lead the charge to the hilltop with their walker gut covered weapons in tow. Now, in the comics, Morgan is long dead. Sadiq doesn't show up until years later, and there aren't any warning horns. So those plot points are unique to the show. But the biggest difference here is that in the comics, Negan, not Simon and Dwight, leads the charge to the hilltop. That whole Negan getting kidnapped thing is unique to the show, but in both mediums, Dwight is playing both sides. More on that in a second. Now to the Battle of the Hilltop. Bam, bam, bam. In the show, Simon and Dwight arrive at the hilltop, and Maggie warns them if they attack, she'll kill all of her captured saviors. But Simon doesn't give a single fuck. He orders his people to follow Daryl into the hilltop where... Ow! They're ambushed by Maggie and her allies. Simon and the saviors retreat and unleash a flurry of walker gut coated arrows. While the arrows fly, more saviors rush in with walker gut coated weapons, and Tobin ends up getting stabbed. Oh no. He almost dies until Carol kills his attacker. Yay! Simon and Dwight sneak up behind Tara and Simon almost kills her, no! Until Dwight shoots her in the side with an arrow. Similar to the subplot in issue 123, perhaps? The saviors nearly win the battle when the hilltop soldiers shoot out the lights and create complete darkness. Simon and Dwight cautiously approach the Barrington house until headlights are switched on and they're ambushed again from all sides. Simon and Dwight survive, but are forced to retreat with what remains of their savior army. Here's how it went down in the comics. Negan shows up at the hilltop, kills their guard, Cal. He was such a good guy. And orders his people to bust down the gates with his truck. It's a trap, and like the show, they get ambushed by Rick and the hilltop soldiers. Instead of Tobin, Marcus gets stabbed and almost killed until Michonne kills his attacker. During the chaos, Negan sneaks up behind Rick and orders Dwight to shoot him with a walker gut covered arrow. But since Dwight's playing both sides, he shoots Rick with a clean arrow. What a guy. Like the show, Negan and his saviors approach the house until they get blinded by headlights and ambushed by Rick and the gang. They're forced to retreat outside of the hilltop where they wait for the injured to return. To sum up the battle, Daryl's motorcycle distraction, Maggie's captured saviors, and Tara's injury were unique to the show, while Cal's death, Rick's injury, and Negan's overall involvement were unique to the comics. So the show borrowed a lot from the comics, but added their own twist. But let's get to the spooky aftermath of the battle. In the show, a mysterious flu breaks out at the hilltop and the sick begin turning into walkers. But they weren't bit, how could this be so? And the hilltop essentially becomes a horror movie. <coughs> Daryl and the others fight off the walkers and Rick figures out they were infected by the savior's weapons. That explains everything. Rick, you've cracked the case. In the comics, the hilltop also reels from a mysterious flu, but it's Jesus and Michonne who discover the infected savior weapon. Rick's the only one injured in battle who doesn't get sick, so he surmises Dwight must have shot him with a clean arrow. Yay! Now, not everyone's so lucky. Nicholas, Michael Trenor's character from the show who is still alive at this point in the comics, gets a crazy bad fever and is forced to be put down by his wife before he can turn. As we mentioned above, any storyline specifically involving Tara, Morgan, Henry, Gavin, Simon, Tobin, and Sadiq are different or completely separate from the story within the pages. In the comics, there was no cage of saviors or zombie outbreak at the hilltop house, Rick got shot and not Tara, and Negan was in charge of the saviors attack on the hilltop instead of Simon. Otherwise, this episode matched up pretty well with the comics. Do you think Tara will be okay? Will Negan find out what happened at the hilltop? And where the hell is Henry? Leave your predictions in our comments and make sure to like this video and subscribe to Skybound. We'll continue breaking down the comic to show comparisons for the rest of the season, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, folks.